Hey, what's up? It's me, your girl Nia. I am coming to you from Black Exploration with Nia. That's when you literally have a chemical imbalance that is causing the personality defect of narcissism. I only want to talk about this because I have supported men through this. And I know that when men are in dark times, they drink alcohol or they have lots of sex. What value can you bring, can you bring to this person and see in them? So how much did you have to fix your relationship with yourself first in order to have a successful relationship with someone else? Even in the realm of dating. When it comes down to it, people's opinions are not facts, it's just their opinions. Hey everyone, this is Nia back with another episode of Black Exploration with Nia. This is a podcast that is solely geared towards authenticity. And today I have the pleasure of meeting and speaking to Daisha Spencer. We met a long time ago. I would say like almost two years ago, uh, we were doing some personal work together, but Daisha has come along so far in her journey that I wanted her to come back and share her journey with the audience members. So we know that on this podcast, we are all about authenticity. So click, like, share this episode. If Deja drops some knowledge that you guys are personally interested in sharing with your networks. And later on in the show, she'll give you uh, ways that you can connect with her and share some of the things that she's been doing in her personal life. So, hey, Deja, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing amazing and I'm even more amazing to have you here on the show because your journey was one that I think will stick with me. I learned a lot from you. Um, We shared a lot. And so I'm just excited about the audience members getting to know you. So, you know, on the RC Wellness brand, we focus on key main areas of uh, mental wellness, which is physical and mental health, spirituality, intimacy, and financial and generational stability and our wealth. So what area of self-exploration will you be talking to our audience members about today? Yeah, I would love to talk about the mental wellness um, aspect. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So tell the audience members a little bit about yourself on a personal and professional level, and then we'll get started into the interview. Yeah, so my name is Deja Spencer. I'm from Long Island, New York. A um, little bit about me is that I graduated from Howard University with a bachelor's in business, um, studying supply chain management. I currently work at Cisco Systems as a business analyst in tech, so definitely one of those techies um, who lived in the Bay Area, which is how I connected with you, um, mm-hmm. living out there, and recently relocated back to the East Coast, so I live in North Carolina now. Um, I'm really passionate about just helping others and being able to give back. I'm a mentor, a leadership coach for college students um, in my job and outside of work as well. Um, And just love doing like service on my free time as well as traveling um, and cooking as well. So it's a little bit about me. Those are some great characteristic traits. So traveling, cooking, and being a servant leader, that's amazing. That sounds like a fulfilling life. So let's go ahead and jump into this self-exploration around mental wellness and mental health. So what got you into focusing on your mental health and your physical health? What were some of the background stories to that? Yeah, um, that's a good question. So I think it was like two points for me. I think the first part was really realizing how much negative self-talk I had um, and that uh, the thoughts of my bullies growing up really became my own Mm -hmm. um and one day I had a wake-up call and realized like Deja like you are your biggest bully now Mm -hmm. um and so I think realizing that was like the first straw and then I would say the second straw for me was definitely dating um realizing that I couldn't articulate what I wanted um and so that caused like a point of frustration for me as well because I knew I wasn't um mentally sound enough in myself and confident enough to be able to say, you know, this is what I want and, um, you know, this relationship or this situation um, and be confident enough to say that to someone. So. So what got you connected with the fact that you weren't ready for that? And how did you feel when you realized that? 
Um, yeah, so I can definitely say that it was tough at first, like realizing that. Um, I think the phrase that uh, really made me recognize it was someone had asked me, he was just like, is this an interview? Um, like, why, why do you keep like drilling me with questions? And I tried to make a joke out of it. Like, oh, this is a job. Don't you want the job? You know, trying to make it funny. But in my head, I'm like, no, like, why am I not able to like, just be relaxed and be myself um, in this situation? And what does that even mean to be myself and like, be like carefree, um, you know, with people who I want to connect with and get to know. And so I think that was like, really the, the point that I realized at all. I was trying to put this on a live because some of my audience members wanted to hear us. So I apologize um, if I was looking away, but you know, I try to keep this podcast as uh, authentic as possible. And you're sharing so many different jewels, especially around dating um, and mental health, right? Because we have so many people that are out there looking for love and not really, like you said, knowing what they want because they're, they're still working on themselves to really develop like that language even one, receive what they want, right? And then two, how to attract it. So a part of um, some of the work that I've been doing personally in my mental wellness and stability is really focusing on feminine energy and, and how that was um, conveyed to me in the space of like mental health. And I was actually just talking to another podcast interview that I was interviewing and we were talking about the, the topic of intimacy um, and how a lot of women and men date in their trauma narrative based off what they've experienced with their parents' relationships or uh, in their own uh, relationships when it comes to trauma in relationships that we really don't talk about, like how many people are traumatized in their relationships. And so the thing that had came up for me was that um, I was in this space where I had spent so much time trying to um, people please my parents and my family that I did it in that space. I did it from a space of like, look, this is a great person. And so that means that I'm, I'm valuable and that I am worthy of your respect. And then when the relationship didn't last, I was left with the residual effects of um, the separation piece. So what I had to personally start to work on in order to have that mental stability and balance that I was looking for is not possessing people. Um, so my question to you is, what has been some of the, the learning lessons that you've learned about yourself personally when it comes to your mental and uh, physical health since you've been on this journey when it comes to relationships? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. Um, so I definitely say first and foremost, back to that point of feminine energy, right? And what does that even mean? What does that look like, right? To have feminine essence and to be able to lead with that. So I think um, that's something that's been like really new to me because oftentimes when we think of women, right? And women in our lives that we love and look up to, it often leads with sacrifice. Yeah. And so learning that, you know, you can still be that woman who is that caretaker that and that loving person, right? In, in people's lives but still prioritize your mental health, still prioritize your mental well-being um, was something that I really had to learn um, and kind of take a step back and be a little bit more selfish in that. Um, so I think that was one. I think two, um, when you go back to like those four areas, right, that you talk about in terms of, um, you know, what it means to be a high value woman in person, um, leading with physical wellness is something that I had to learn. Um, is top priority for me. So being able to literally work out every single day, whether that means go for a walk, go to the gym, um, it completely changes my mood. Um, literally, I had a friend come live with me and she was like, Deja, I was very concerned um, about your mental wellness because all I would do is sit down and binge watch Netflix and order food after I logged off my laptop for work. Mm -hmm. And that is not a healthy space to be in at all. Um, I in a new state where I knew nobody, um, had no friends. And so I decided to kind of isolate myself even further um, and not put myself out there, but literally deciding, okay, like, let's get our physical wellness together, go to the gym every day, like completely like just elevated my mood, the way um, I carry myself and um, how I interact with others um, and just having more motivation overall. So just learning that for me, that's what I needed to prioritize. Um, yeah. 
that sounds like the spiritual awakening too. Um, and, and what people fairly realize is sometimes we need that extra energy to have that next level awakening consciously. And if we don't ever get it going, then it's never going to get that's, then it's never going to get started. So since you've gotten it started, what are some changes you've seen in your life since you've been focusing on your physical and mental health? Yeah. Um, so first and foremost, I got baptized. Um, oh, congratulations. Thanks. And so I think learning to grow closer to God during like this wilderness season of my life um, mm -hmm. was something that I really had to learn. Um, that, you know, this was time for me to grow in my relationship spiritually. Um, so I think that was one. Something else is really um, that, ooh, I lost my train of thought. Uh, <laughs> what was the question again? So the question was, have you learned anything um, from your physical and mental health journey that you can share with others? Okay, yes. Um, so yeah, definitely learning that, yeah, you need to find time in your day in your life to carve out for yourself um, and prioritize just you. So whether that means waking up and stretching, going to the gym, whatever that is, I think just figuring out what helps you energize to start your day. That was really important for me. Um, and then also then it opened me up spiritually as well to better connect with God. I got through my first like fast where I didn't eat any food um for four days and that was like hard because I love food so much and like I never thought I could go without it like I thought I needed this to survive but having confidence in myself mentally to know that I'm strong enough to get through something like that and um strong enough sense for me to move around physically so I'm not tired and lethargic all day from not eating right I think that um was something else that I was very proud of um, that I was able to get through by prioritizing my physical and mental health. So what are some habits that you've increased or let go of since you've been more conscious on, about your physical and mental health? Yeah, so definitely exercising more. Um, that's uh, definitely a habit that I've increased. I would say being more conscious about the foods that I put in my body. Um, and, you know, I used to literally eat out every single day. <laughs> so teaching myself to actually cook um, every now and again, and, you know, integrate it more consistently throughout the week, um, was really important. Yeah. And it saves you money too, because always having to be codependent on going to go get food, like, oh, you start to just Uber eats because you don't want to go out and then Uber eats, they add up. And then you look at your billing statement at the end of the month and you spend so much money on food that if you would just got groceries, it would probably would have been cheaper. So, I have definitely been in that cat, cat and mouse game. And I just recently, for just spiritual purposes, started to um, go back to vegetarian. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm not, I'm not a vegetarian. Let, let me get, be very clear. It's just sometimes when I'm in these spiritual walks, it calls for me to change my diet. And so rather than like question it because it's out of my routine, I just kind of fall in alignment because I, I'm listening more to my body instead of um, my mind and my body is saying right now, what it needs is rest, relaxation. It doesn't wanna think, it wants to feel more. Um, and it wants to respond to things that bring it joy and energize it, not drain it and, and, and use it for productivity. And so that's counter, counter culture for me and counter culture for the climates that I'm used to working in, which are high performing uh cultures especially for uh supporting high professional for performing professionals but it's also allowing me to see and gain more insight on what my clientele needs so that they can get to this rested state so i'm having to go through the process um to help my clients but it doesn't feel good to me because i'm a somatic person so it's just been this up and down but one thing i can say is that uh, focusing on our mental health is something that um, Black women don't talk about a lot. Um, when we talk about it, we talk about it in the space of like physical looks and attraction. Um, I know me personally, it was never about the physical, I mean, the health aspect of it. It was all about to attract a husband or to be a competitor amongst other Black women. And so I'm interested in learning your story about like how was physical health and mental health presented to you before you define, defined it for yourself? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think ultimately everything at some level boils down to acceptance and mm -hmm. wanting to be accepted by others. 
And so I think for me, it, that's kind of where it started was that surface level, like, you know, like I want to be the girl that like people will smile and wave at and just like approach and want to talk to, or like, you know, not, um, you know, when I go out with my friends, not be like nervous or afraid that, you know, no one's going to try and approach me because, you know, I'm unattractive or, you know, anything like that, right, to them physically. But then I think the biggest thing for me was realizing that, you know, you're always going to chase the acceptance of others if you don't accept yourself first. Mm -hmm. Um, And that you have always, that I've always been blessed and everyone's always been blessed with the acceptance of God. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, you're more than enough in his eyes and you were created perfectly. Um, And I think my, the favorite phrase that you gave me that I always share with others is Jesus walked a perfect life. So you don't have to. Yeah. So, literally, that's something I take with me all the time. And so just learning to accept the fact that, hey, I don't have to be perfect, that I was perfectly created as myself. Yeah. Um, and just being able to accept that was like the first like major step for that, you know, mental wellness. So, so if, you, if there's an audience member who is considering mental health services, but are on that cusp between you know, they don't want to be stigmatized and admit that something's wrong with them, right? Um, and they don't want to be judged. What are some benefits you've gotten out of like choosing to go to therapy versus uh, choosing just to focus on your own healing? Yeah, um, I'd say first and foremost, learning that there is nothing wrong with me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so I think getting rid of that thought that like, I literally used to try to sit down at the dinner table with my family and I'd come with a new diagnosis every day. Like I have this, I have this issue, I have this issue, but learning that, no, like you truly don't, you just need to heal. Um, And so, you know, I think accepting the fact that there's things in this life that you can't control um, and creating a safe space for yourself to work with somebody who can help you heal and become a more whole person. I think that's one. I think also understanding that change doesn't happen overnight. You know, I'm 24, I had 24 years of like trauma and things to like get over and that's not gonna happen overnight and certainly not something that I can do by myself. Mm -hmm. And so just accepting the fact that you don't know this person on the other side of the screen. So it's not like they're gonna go to your friends and family and gossip and tell them about you, right? It's a safe space um, with a licensed professional, you know, who is legally obligated to, you know, hold those conversations, you know, between you two. And so just finding somebody that you can build trust with and communicate with openly um, without the fear of being judged, um, I think is a great thing to open yourself up to. Have you ever personally tried to date under those circumstances of like meeting a person authentic, authentically who accepts your wellness journey? Um, and how has that been rewarding if you have or how, how has it not? Yeah, I don't know if I've ever dated someone and gotten close enough to open up fully about my mental wellness journey. Um I think I've met some guys where, you know, we've been great enough on like a friendship surface level, but not necessarily somebody I would date um, to, you know, talk with them about like mental wellness and and spiritual wellness and everything like that. But um, no, this is not a journey that I've shared with honestly, very many people outside of my close circle. Right. All right. So the part of the reason why I ask that is because the last week of every interview um, he talked about that, how him and his partner um, are healing, you know, through their level of intimacy. And he actually looked for a partner um, to share in that intimacy with him. If you were to meet a special someone who um, was interested in learning more about your journey, what do you think some key steps would be for you to open up or for any woman to open up to a man when it comes to her wellness journey? Yeah, I <laughs> Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, The thing that I talk that I find most common about my friends when we give like our top three non negotiables or whatever about men is that feeling of safety um, and trust, right? And so just being able to establish first and foremost, like a friendship and and a bond where we can have an open line of communication, just starting surface level about how our day went. Can I complain to you about, you know, work, about my personal life, about, you know, 
this person who cut me off on the street without feeling like I'm being judged, you mm -hmm. know, about my reactions. And so I think being able to first and foremost establish that, that bond um, and feeling of safety that I'm not going to be judged, um, I think is very important. And then secondly, um, you also sharing. So um, not just it being like a place for me to like be the only one who's giving um, in the situation, but also hearing about their journey and things that they're going through and how they've healed and are continuing to work on themselves. Um, and yeah, just being an active listener um, lastly, and, you know, just being there to give good advice, support, and all of that, um, I think is ultimately what would build that sense of like trust and, and connection. Those are some really key major dating points too, because I think that um, as we are innovating, we're innovating the way that we connect, and it's less on a, on a uh, superficial capacity because we're all going through something, which calls for us to have deeper dialogue. So I'm, I'm really proud to hear that you're on the other side of authenticity and getting to know yourself so that when you do meet someone, um, they would be able to be emotionally intelligent enough to meet you where you're at. That's going to be a really great, rich relationship to have. And I think it's going to bring that sense of safety and stability. That's what I'm also personally looking for in, in my dating life is that, that sense of safety and, and trust and security. So I'm happy that you brought that up because I think that in order for a woman to really be in her feminine energy, however she chooses to display it, safety, you know, for her to come out and be vulnerable is, is very imperative for any type of relationship, whether it be from a, with a man and a man or a man and a woman or a man and a man. I mean, like, that's just how safety goes. So um, this has been like a really great uh, conversation around getting people introduced into the wellness space, sharing a little bit about your journey. If you can reflect back on the last two years of your wellness journey, what are your top three takeaways you want to share with the audience? Yeah, um, I say first and foremost, just get started. Don't be afraid. Um, every day, life is short. So every day that you're taking, you know, trying to decide like whether or not you want to open up yourself to, you know, talking and, and seeking out, um, you know, mental health um, assistance, you know, it's a day that you're taking away from your freedom um, and, and true release. So I say just get started. I say secondly, be open to the journey. Um, it's sometimes it may feel like it's getting worse before it actually gets better. Um, and you're not going to need therapy every single day for the rest of your life if you're truly open to the process. So I think just knowing that, you know, there's another side to it. I'm a testimony to that. Yeah. Um, you know, you don't, you don't have to feel like you're always going to have to need this as like a clutch or a crutch, excuse me, in your life. Um, but it's more of an, an aid. And so lastly, I would definitely say, um, have fun with it. Visualize who you wanna be. Um, who's that person you wanna end up being at the end of this journey? Um, I always tell myself like, oh, I'm seeing her, you know, a little bit more every day. Um, and so knowing who you want that person to be at the end of it all and waking up and walking as, that, as if you are that person every single day um, is gonna be really critical for you to getting to the other side of, of that journey. That's dope. So, if you could be any instrument in the entire world that you wanted to be, what type of instrument would you be and why? I think I'm a little biased, but uh, I'd be a bass clarinet. I've played okay. bass clarinet um, for several years. And I just think it's a very beautiful instrument, um, has very be beautiful, rich, deep tones. Mm -hmm. um, and so many layers and, and keys and, and buttons to it and so much range mm -hmm. um, and beauty in the instrument. And so that's the instrument I would be. Okay. And so if you can look in five years in the future, where can we expect Asia to be at in her journey? Oh, that's a good question. I would definitely say, um, I definitely hope to have evolved um, into really having the best balance I can across, you know, all of those four critical areas of like mental health and spiritual wellness, financial freedom, as well as intimacy, just having the maximum amount of balance that I can across all four areas. Um, and just ultimately that girl that I'm talking about in my head that I say, hey, I'm her, yeah. um, actually like waking up and knowing that I am her, having a solid life routine, um, and just not being afraid to like every time I step outside my door to be myself. So 
Well, Deja, your energy is definitely sacred and one that we want to have people connect to because we need so much positivity, especially more Black women talking about taking care of themselves, having balance, but also at the same time creating a life of your dreams. So where can the audience members find you if they would love to connect with you? Yeah, so I have Instagram, Facebook, um, and LinkedIn. So you can find my name, Deja Spencer, on all those platforms. No, no. Um, punctuations in between. Um, and then also in my Instagram bio, you can find um, my page, Art of Soul Searching, which is just a great positive spiritual page that just highlights, um, you know, wanting to bring people into connection with their spirit and their soul and figure out a little bit more about who they are and, and you know, what they're after and also hold myself accountable for that journey. So if you follow that page, you know, we'll definitely be on this soul searching journey together. That's all uh, that's dope. Any plans for the summer? Well, I'll be going to Aruba on Wednesday. So excited okay. about that. Yeah. Aruba, that sounds so exotic. Yes. Yeah. Going with friends, family? Yes, with some friends from college. Yay, so a friend's trip. That's also part of mental wellness is taking care of yourself by spending time with others who expand you and help you to grow. So I want to say thank you so much, Deja, uh, for coming on the show. And thank you so much for being so transparent about your healing journey and your physical and mental health exploration. You know, this is a show all about authenticity. And so I want to encourage all the audience members to participate. If you have comments, please like, please share. We want your opinion. Or if you yourself have a healing journey or story that you want to share in those four key areas, please write in, let us know. We want to have more authentic self-explorational journeys. We are for all people, but we talk about the Black explorational journey because we don't have too many conversations about this. And so I'm your host, Mia, saying thank you for being a part of my podcast network. Um, and I'm looking forward to still growing and exploring and learning more in the future. So thanks for dropping by again. And thank you, Deja, for being an amazing guest on this podcast. Thanks, Nia, for having me. All right. So tune in till next time, guys. This is another episode of Black Exploration with Nia. Bye.